uh, being uh, told that he should be suing him for a hundred thousand pounds. Uh, this man who's never worked, got a history of crime, uh, who's now complaining his sex life is ruined. He can't watch television, sad films on television. He can't work. He's got trouble having sex and all this bollocks. Uh, and he thinks he should get paid a hundred thousand pounds for this. I think he should get. I think he should be locked away for the rest of his life. Uh, and this comes on the back, of course, of this other lowlife, Carl Jones, who, whilst in prison uh, for demanding money with menaces, slipped on some soap in the shower. We've all heard that one, haven't we? Apparently uh, damaged his back, and he's ended up getting 250-odd thousand pounds, a quarter of a million pounds off us um, in damages for hurting his back. It's another scumbag criminal. Justice in this country has disappeared. There will be a revolution if we don't suddenly start getting treated with some respect. Those of us who are, apart from the odd problem with driving, of course, um, who behave in a socially uh, per correct and proper way are getting abused uh, by this country. We're getting abused by the system. And it's, it's got to stop. It really has got to stop. The other thing is uh, this, this business, apparently, we're going to have uh, not less. I love that story in the news. I love that story in the news, that plonker for the Welsh National Party. Well, it's a strange party. Well, he said uh, br English people were only moving to Wales because they wanted to get away from the immigrants. No, it's because there's some, there's some very good deals for houses up there. Yeah, you wouldn't, it's ridiculous, you know. We, we want to, it's Britain, we want to live in Wales, we want to live in Scotland, we'll live wherever we want. The only problem the Welsh have got is that ridiculous Welsh language that they spend so much time worrying about, they have got no economy to talk about because all the money is spent on promoting that stupid language. You know, the language is dead. Well, okay, if you want to, if you want to learn, learn Welsh and speak it as a hobby and do all that, fine. But the Welsh language is dead. It is of no use. It's not even as useful as Latin. And Latin's not much use either. It's ridiculous. You got rid of that, and then you'd probably have a lot more money in Wales. And, uh, you know, and if we want to go there and buy up their houses because they're cheap, and we won't go and spend our holidays there, they're very lucky that we're going to go there and spend holidays there. Yeah, at least we're not invading them anymore. Exactly. And talking about this as well, and now um, the Home Office has signed up this deal with the United Nations to allow around 500 West African refugees into this country. Probably most of them are going to be Liberians. You know, Kalashnikov in one hand, Spliff in the other hand. A really wonderful bunch. Um, as part of uh, a commitment, we have signed, the British government has signed up with the United Nations High Commission for Refugees. Uh, this is something we weren't going to do, but apparently we've done it now. And we're going to do it all the time. We're going to, the, the, uh, it's going to continue. This will be the first time that Britain participates in the UN's long-running resettlement program for refugees. Uh, previous governments have been unwilling to open our borders to yet more people seeking sanctuary. I mean, presumably this Labour government thinks Britain isn't doing enough to help the asylum seekers of the world. Countries like Australia, Denmark and Sweden have been signatories to this arrangement for years. But that is because they have effective asylum seeker policies. If you arrive illegally in Australia and try to claim asylum, when you arrive, you're called a queue jumper and you are sent to a camp in the middle of the desert until your claim is heard. If it's denied and 80% are, you're put on a big plane and shipped back to where you came from. And not three at a time on a huge jumbo with ten guards like we do, no. Plane loads, right back to China, Afghanistan, Indonesia. All countries have a responsibility to accept genuine refugees. Nobody doubts that. Of course we do. Those people who are fleeing state persecution, who if they speak out are likely to be killed or their families injured, we must help them and continue to help them. But until this country, this government of ours, who seem to be so ineffective at everything, has an effective system to deal with the millions who arrive here illegally, there is no way we should be letting in more courtesy of the bloody United Nations Commission for Refugees. And they're a waster as well. The UN is a total toothless tiger. We don't want to have anything to do with the UN, in my opinion. 
And we don't want any more people just coming into this country until we have a policy. This government has no policy. In fact, no previous government has had any policy. Anybody coming here who wishes to claim asylum should be housed in a secure institution. Not allowed the run of this country. Not allowed money to buy cars. Money to take taxis. They should be housed in a secure institution. And people who are caught, who've been here illegally for years, we've just seen a few people sent back. We've had their, their crying children on the television saying, oh, it's terrible, we're being sent back and everything else. It's not terrible at all. They were sent back to Germany. And they were escaping from Turkey. Um, sorry, I thought Turkey was all right. I mean, isn't Turkey part of or hoping to be part of the European Union? This is ridiculous. We are becoming such a soft touch that unless we do something with our legal system where the people of this country feel more secure and the criminals are punished and stop allowing anybody and everybody who wishes to come here to ponce off the state, we are going to be... Well, I tell you this, we will be on the streets if it doesn't improve. And the people of this country are getting sick and tired of being treated in this way. It can't go on. 0871 treble two double eight double eight. Who's next? Got Richie. Richie, you're on the air. Hi, Richie. Good evening, James. Yeah, Richie. Uh, I know it's not a topic I'm not covering tonight, but... Um, Is there right anything, Richie? I'm just... I just, you know, I just want to ring in... Uh, I live in a little seaside town called Malden in Essex. I know. It's, it's very it's nice. Yeah. yeah, I do know. It's got, it's got old... Um, Thames barges more down the road. Yeah. yeah. I have to travel to Chelmsford uh, every day and then back again to work. What's been happening over the last three weeks is um, I've got unmarked vans now with uh, with cameras up. And oh. I went past one this morning, and the coppers um, the coppers reading the paper. <laughs> and um, as he's reading the paper, as he's reading the paper, you have to. Um, as he's reading the paper, you've got to make sure he do not clip you as you go by with the speed gun. And this has been happening now for three weeks. Mm. Now, the, the problem being is as, you, as I'm driving to and from work now, you've got to make sure you don't go over 30 mile an hour. Because any van that's parked up there, because these are unmarked, you don't have the coppers set the camera up in there. Well, can, they do, can, they, can you get nicked? Well, what I know is, can you actually get nicked by these people? Yeah, you can. This? Um... If, but well, it's entrapment, it's, surely. Well, it is entrapment, um, but, you know... It's a damn disgrace. I was speaking to a fella today. Mm. What he's saying they're doing is, apparently these cameras now can go through to your windscreen, tell if you've got no tax, they, they run a check on you to see if you're wanted or whatever, mm -hmm. and they can also do you for speeding. They can sit there with a little flask and a newspaper mm. and have a pleasant day. Well, I hope the people in the van who are doing this are not coppers, because anyway... Oh, listen, they are policemen, trust well, me. we should have just ordinary... And on the sides of the van, in very mm. tiny writing, and I don't wear glasses, so I struggle to see it, yeah. is Essex Police making roads safer. <laughs> safer. Yeah, we... They're looking like AA vans. Yeah, you know, the thing is, I'm not, I'm not really against that. Um... Or, well, no, am I, but you know, what I am against is is the sort of uh, the dual carriageway and stuff like that. I mean, if if it's a thirty mile an hour area, if there are schools and if there are places where people should be stop speeding, that's where they should be. I don't think we should be wasting the, in these vans. Uh, they shouldn't have coppers there. They should have um, civilian wardens. stuff, traffic wardens, something like that. We shouldn't be wasting the time of policemen. We need them elsewhere. And you know. If if they're checking on people who don't pay their tax, well, I think that's a that's a good thing to do. Yes, actually, superb, so. yeah. yeah, I can't believe. Yes. Yeah, so superb. what is it? What is it you're actually complaining about then? Well, no. The, well, what I'm actually saying is, James, you know yourself, when you're driving along, okay, you can't sit there and watch your speeder and make sure you haven't gone over thirty mile an hour. Mm. But what, that's what you've got to do now because you just don't know. I mean, this morning when I was driving to work, I mean, I've got a clean license and I've held it for twenty years now. But what I'm, what, what's happening now is. Any van you see parked up, you've got to look. You actually, well, you've, you shouldn't. If you're in a 30 mile an hour limit, I suppose you shouldn't really be doing more than 30. Yeah, should but you? Uh, through Haybridge and places mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. it can change within a quarter of a mile, Jones. All well, of a sudden it's 40, yeah, then it's yeah. 30, then it's yeah. 40, then but it's 30. But I think you'll find. In, you know? I think you'll find that most of those cameras are triggered if you go over 40. They won't have it over 30. I wouldn't have thought. 
I've no ideas. I mean, I don't I think I've gone through yeah. one now, but he, he, I've got to tell you, I went through one the other night. You don't know where they're going to pop up, you know. Well, you're just going to have to drive carefully. Thank goodness for that, William. Thank you for your call. Oh eight seven one triple two by. Uh, that was Richie. Was it Richie? Oh, that was Richie and William's next. Hi, William. Um, Hello, James. Hi, William. Hi. I uh, just want to agree with uh, all the stuff you've been talking about. Uh, you know, these people suing uh, criminals, suing innocent members of the public for mm -hmm. so many hundreds of thousands of pounds. Um, I've just come back from Australia. I've been there for fifteen months, and. Um, it's not reported out there, but, you know, you see the police heavy-handed with criminals and they, you know, they, they don't treat them lightly. And you just don't hear of the criminals actually coming back and suing police mm. or certain people for, you know, for actually c committing criminal offences against, you know, innocent members of the public. It's just, it's just not happened. And it, it just seems that this country now is just taking the right old mickey out of us yeah. citizens that are, you know, law-abiding. I think, I think what we have to do is we have to curtail uh, the behaviour of members of the legal profession because a lot of these people are encouraged, I think, by uh, these, uh, you know, cocky legal people who think, oh, uh, you know, we'll probably get some... Um, Get, get a bit of conversation going there or whatever. Oh, yeah, but they I think, are, that's a, I think that's a problem. I think we need to control our solicitors and barristers a lot more. And I, yeah, I yeah, don't think... The problem is we've got such, such useless judges. And if the judges aren't useless, if it's the law that's useless, then we need to know about it and we need to make sure our politicians change it. I'm, I'm that's get, right, James. That's I'm right, getting fed it, up and I think everybody's getting fed up with the way things are going. It seems that you have to now be a criminal or break the law to actually get on in this world, in, in, well, in England, in, in Britain. It, uh, it, uh, you're actually you right, know? yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one here. I've, I've had three good jobs in my life, been made redundant three times, and, you know, you go to work, for, mm -hmm. you work hard, you do a decent, you know, decent pay you, 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 you expect, and it, it just seems that it gets you nowhere. You know that there's thousands of people out there you know, that get up every morning to work for hundred pounds. And you remember the the riots in this country when Margaret Thatcher tried to impose this sort of poll tax? Absolutely. And things are going that way. I think if if we don't start getting treated a little better by the people who are supposed to be our servants, that's right. Well, I mean, they are there. They're voted in by us. Exactly. Uh, some of this, by the way, we've got to get out and take part in elections because um, if there's massive turnouts and people start losing their places and things like that, they will start taking more interest. That's right, James. I mean, you know, my, my, real, my real point is the Australian seemed, the government seems to look after yeah. the Australian people first. Exactly. And then if they can look after unfortunate, you know, asylum seekers yeah. or whatever, yeah. they yeah. then look after them. Whereas yeah. our country seems to look after them first. Unfortunately, I, we've got these politically correct uh, socialists, right, who run everything in this country at the moment. You've only got to look at them. Local council, national government, they are there. The women with the short haircuts, the men with the little glasses, <laughs> the people who are, you, you know, the social workers, the probation officers, the all these people, uh, the union leaders, all these people are striving as far as I can see, this is my interpretation only, to make the rest of us have more trouble in our lives. Absolutely. And Absolutely. particularly, if you are managing, all right, to earn a few bob, to bring up your family, to try and make life better for yourself and your family, then these people, the politically correct, are saying, oh, well, well, well you shouldn't be getting that. Oh, no, there's all these people who haven't had a benefit of a good upbringing and haven't aren't had this and haven't <laughs> had that. You know, I think we, the silent majority in this country have oh, got to start standing up for ourselves. It's going to explode, James, 100%. Thanks for your call. Back after this. Are you alone? Bored? Fancy some one-on-one -on -one adult fun? Grab your mobile and text the word FUN to 82333. Instantly chat and make adult text friends from around the UK. It's fun, flirty, and one-on-one. -on -one. Text FUN to 82333 service provided by F-Text. For customer support, call 08707 60 67 68. Messages cost up to £1.50. Standard network rates apply. You must be over 18 to use the service. Soccer Bet Magazine. The new weekly guide to all the football forms. Soccer Bet Magazine. The essential form guide to every match from the Premiership, Nationwide, Scottish and Major European Leagues. 
Soccer Bet magazine. The new magazine stacked with stats and unmissable analysis on all the week's football fixtures. Soccer Bet magazine. Launches the 15th of August from news agents and premiership grounds. Price £1.20. Soccer Bet magazine. It's a winner. I love High Street Electrical Shops. I love all their flashy displays and their glossy brochures. I love all those assistants buzzing around trying to be helpful. I love all that. I really do. It gives me a real warm glow. But at the end of the day, who needs it? I'd rather just go home and buy what I'm after online at QED for up to 30% less than the recommended retail price. QED-UK.com, the no-nonsense electrical e-tailer. It's always hard at this time of the year, but this year I'm not sure I can cope. I'm overdrawn, my credit cards are full, I can't even make the minimum payments. I can't go on like this. You're not alone. Every day we help families just like yours to solve their debt problems. If you've debts of at least £10,000 and have a regular household income, call Debt Free Direct today and talk to one of our friendly advisors. Call Debt Free Direct on 08000 933 833. Mike Paris, postcard from Rail. Oh, the Eleven. I speak to you live from the basement of Pound Pullers, Rail's oldest and most established discount store, where you don't have to ask the price because everything's a pound. Where Mr. Brazil and I have spent the morning stocking up on gifts for our talk to colleagues. A decorative ashtray for Mike Dickin, an Airfix model for Adrian Durham, and a bottle of whiskey for Bill Young. Uh, actually, Porky, there's not a lot left. Uh, this is Mike Parry reporting to you live from the basement of Pound Pullers for Talk Sport on the penultimate day of the Sports Breakfast annual vacation in Rill, North Wales. It's fun, the Sports Breakfast. Graham Beecroft and Tony Cascarino in for Brazil and Parry. Tomorrow morning from 6 on Talk Sport. <laughs> I could have been, I could have been a singer. I could have been the next Russell Watson. Yeah, you could have. But it all went wrong. I'm not sure what happened. It just all went wrong. Uh, welcome back to the James Whale Show. You're listening to TalkSport. David Essex is on next week. Don't forget one of our guests. Many other people, but David Essex is one of them. Uh, Willie in Glasgow. Hi. Hi, good evening, James. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, Willie. What about you? Uh, no bad. I was just wondering what you're talking about there. The small people with the glasses. Do you know where small glasses, James? Uh, <laughs> how'd you like a smack in the mouth, Willie? Oh, How'd you like to be force-fed with haggis, Willie? Oh, I'd love it. I'd love How it. I'd would love you like me, me to take all your whiskey away from you, Willie? James, I don't drink whiskey, mate. It's you... a myth. Yes, it's Scotch, isn't it? Up there? As I've seen you before, about my when my car got broken, you just before Tony Martin. I actually read it in the Sun. Obviously, I picked it up wrong. Barry corrected me there before we get through. It was what? actually his brother. Similarly, had said that he was withdrawing his civil action. Well, yeah. You don't remember reading about that? No, he's, yeah, but he's not. No, well, obviously not, but mm. see, I picked it up wrong, but yeah. that was quite surprising. It was more or less the day, I think, that Tony Martin was getting released, obviously, with all the hype in the paper, etc. Mm. No, he's, uh, this fear and character's going ahead with it. He's been told by somebody, obviously, it's a good idea. But, as I say, I remember at the time you said, you know, why do they not have the solicitors uh, mm. publicly made to stand up? Yep. and explain why yeah. they are prepared to represent scum like this. Let's face it, they're just scum. Yeah. All right, Willie, thank you for putting that right. Okay, uh, 0871 uh, Say again. Gideon in London. Yeah. I was doing it, trying to do it in your talk back again. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I quite like I, it, you know, like yeah, that yeah. girl on that Channel 5 program. Well, yeah. You know, and I thought you were doing very well. I'll do it like her last night, you know. We've we, we got Gideon in London, man. You see, I like that. Gideon in London, you're on Talk Sport. Hi. James, good to speak to you. How are you keeping? Good. Gideon, what can I do for you? Yeah, just want to make a couple of points about asylum seekers. Uh, you mentioned um, Turkish asylum seekers. I did. Uh, and I didn't know there was such a thing, by the way, because I thought, you know, Turkey was quite a nice place. People go on holiday there, so... Turkey is a pretty nice place in parts, but there are uh, significant numbers of uh, Kurds in Turkey mm -hmm. who, um, many of whom feel they should have their own state called Kurdistan. Yeah. And um, there have been groups there that have carried out terrorist attacks um, quite extremist groups that have been causing problems mm. that they want a Turkish 
this Kurdish yeah, but that, that, that's, state. That, that, and listen. therefore anybody connected yeah. to these groups in any way politically um, without harmful intentions has often been on the, on the receiving end of, um, of discrimination. And well, the Turkish, the Turkish government had better sort it out. There's no reason for these people to come running over here to us. I mean, Turkey is trying to sell itself as a, um, a possible new member of the European Union, for goodness sake. Mm-hmm. Which I don't think you'd ever get, but there we are. All, all I'm saying is that there might be good reason for those people being here mm. if well. they are involved in um, in these types of issues, and they might they might be on the receiving end of particularly. Why don't we just? I tell you what we'll do then, Gideon. Why don't we just open our doors and say, "Listen, if you're a terrorist or involved in terrorist acts, come and join us in Britain." We did we'll, that years ago, didn't we? Did we? We'll give you a house, a car, we'll give you a new identity. Come and live here. And bring your eight wives and 17 yeah. kids. But they're no. not necessarily terrorists. Like, if they're Kurds yeah. and they have... Uh, I'm not, I don't have no sympathy, Gideon. You won't get through to me, mate. Um, you know, let Turkey sort the problem out. Why should we do it? You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna seek asylum, the rules are you go to the nearest country away from you, and that means we should never have any asylum seekers. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm not suggesting we don't take people who wish to come to Britain. It's a great country to come to, and if you can be uh, a useful member of uh, society here, please come over. Uh, people who want to emigrate to Britain, uh, we, we're uh, looking for people with the right skills to come over here and live here. Of course, like lots of other countries, fine. What we don't want is all the dregs of humanity who are coming over here because they've heard it's dead easy to get stuff for nothing. Right. Right. Sure, sure, I hear you. Um, another point I'd like to make, if possible, um, is you did you did use uh, language which suggested that a, a significant portion of the people that do come here have come for an easy ride for benefits and to scrounge off the state, as you put it. <coughs> um, and I think very few people actually have the facts to hand. Uh, and you do, Gideon, do you? I don't. I don't. And oh, I, I see. And one, my point is, mm. while while it's unclear as to what percentage of these people. <coughs> Um, are carrying out uh, practices such as scrounging. Um, I, I do think it's dangerous to be um, making statements like that because there's enough... Gideon. There's enough... There's Gideon. Enough, um, bye bye. I've had enough. The social, sloppy, lefty, liberal sort of uh, bollocks that I'm hearing for you. Bye bye, Gideon. Bye bye. You see hundreds, don't you, of single blokes yeah. legging it onto lorries. Yeah. yeah. You know, we don't see lots of families coming no. over here, do we? And if people come here illegally, I'm sorry, whatever, you get what you deserve if you come here illegally. Nobody's saying we're not caring, we're not, you know, but we are getting people coming here illegally. Too many, we don't even have the first idea of how many. There could be, there could be half a million or so every year. They're coming here, they're slipping away into different areas of this country and living anonymously. And until we do something about it, like other countries, we will continue to suffer. In a lot of areas, you cannot get a, 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 a GP because they're they're, they're uh, full. They have not, there are so many problems that people say, "Oh, it doesn't," you know. No. And there are too many people like this bloody Gideon as well. Too many bleeding heart liberals. James, doesn't it get lonely in those underground studios without Ash, Bill, Bungie? No. Oh dear, Bill Bungie. He's he must it's like a holiday, it is. It is, really, is. Uh, James, did you know a lot of people know this, that Saddam Hussein and his sons died in their past life in the room you're broadcasting from? <laughs> um, could you ask your girl? That's one for the guests. Uh, James, that smiling git ought to spend life in prison, uh, then be shot uh, in his near end. Really. Um, Stuart, oh, Stuart Pottinger from Chelmsford. Yeah, we used to have a, a window cleaner called Pottinger when I was a small boy. Um, I know it's your, in, I know it's in your interest to keep pushing these, uh, but there is little of interest on them when you check out the state. Oh, he's going, I just like digital radios. I believe, uh... To, unless you are on top of a transmitter, the reception, apparently, unless you are on near a, a, a transmitter, digital transmitter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not good. Well, it's not good reception anyway, anywhere. Uh, but the trans, you know, if, if you're not near a receiver, if your area is not covered, but uh, if you can get good mobile phone coverage, you can get good digital radio and TV coverage. There are certain areas, I'm afraid, 
um, that it's not so good, but that will be improved because eventually there will be no um, FM, uh, no medium wave, no, it'll all be, di everything will be digital. Television and radio will all be digital. In fact, the government wanted to turn off the uh, transmitters in the next year or so, but uh, they won't be. Yeah, because they so, can make more money out of it. Exactly, that. yeah. Uh, Jane from, uh, I don't know where, she says, uh, James, you made an interesting and what could be considered as an incitement, oh, I see, uh, regarding covering a Muslim in pigskin. Uh, I think you misunderstand the Islamic religion. It does not matter uh, what you or another non-Muslim does or forces a Muslim to do. It is the Muslim, uh, it is what the Muslim does of his own volition that is the offence. If he did act in the manner as has been alleged, well, stupid woman, he's been found guilty of it. What are you talking about? If he did act in the manner he's been found alleged, uh, then that is his heinous crime, and uh, that is what he is judged by nothing else. I understand this concept might be a bit difficult for you to comprehend, but please try. Don't be so flipping <laughs> patronising. You know, maybe we should hear of a few more Muslim clerics coming out and saying how disgusting they think all these uh, terrorists are. I mean, all these terrorists that are threatening the world at the moment are doing it in the name of Islam. I would have thought there would have been more, um, more, more people sort of decrying this from the Muslim world, but still. Uh, and uh, if that's racist, I don't, I don't actually understand how that is racist. It's uh, the same way that I think that the. Uh, the Christians have uh, got very little going on in their sad little lives that they are uh, preoccupied with whether somebody is uh, homosexual or not. There must be more to their lives than that, surely. Um, okay, those are some of the emails. We've got another call. What are we doing now? We've got Chris in Essex, man. Chris in Essex. Hi, you're on the air. All right, James. Yes, Chris. Yeah, I just, I've worked hard all my life. I beg your pardon? I've worked hard all my life. No, no, that was your first mistake. I know. And it's just, some of these asylum seekers that come in, I'm not, let's say one thing, I'm not racist for a start, right? Well, but when get, people say that, it always worries me, but okay, go on. Yeah, but they get these big houses to live in, and then mm. they've got the cheek to rent them out. <clears throat> uh, I don't think if you get a council house, you are allowed to sublet it, so I think probably, Chris, somebody's been pulling your plonker about that. No, oh, eight seven one triple two double eight double eight. we'll take a break, back with Ed Dames after this. Talk Sport Premiership Preview with the Daily Telegraph. Britain's best-selling quality daily. Read a bestseller every day. Oh, my word! That is sensational! All next week, Talk Sport looks ahead to the 2003 Premiership season. And you and nine of your mates could be off to see Leeds versus Birmingham or Chelsea versus Newcastle from a VIP hospitality box. All next week, listen to the Sports Breakfast every morning from 6 and Bill Young a drive and hear in-depth player profiles, interviews with top Telegraph experts and all the build-up to another great season of Premiership football. Talk Sport Premiership Preview with the Daily Telegraph. Britain's best-selling quality daily. Read a bestseller every day. The wait is over. For the smash hit US number one, Empire is Calling, the best blockbuster of the summer. Here they be monsters. <laughs> so get ready, because the pirates are coming. <laughs> pirates of the Caribbean isn't just good, it's great, say Total Film. You like pain? Please try wearing a corset. Starring Johnny Depp. You're not facing normal pirates. Orlando Bloom. Here they come. And Kira Knightley. I hardly believe in ghost stories anymore. From producer Jerry Bruckheimer and director Gorba you best start believing in ghost stories. You're in one. Pirates of the Caribbean, now at cinemas everywhere. Go with Renault. Go for the van that makes better business sense. The new look Renault Kangoo van. Built for comfort, engineered for the job in hand. There's one to suit every need, with the plus versions offering a range of diesel engines, side loading door, anchorage points, floor coverings, overhead parcel shelves, CD player, you name it. Go for a Kangoo van now and you can get away with a thousand pounds off. That's right. Business users who order and register before the 30th of September 2003 can now buy any Kangoo van and get a thousand pounds off. The list price. To get away with a new Kangoo van, call 0800 525150 or visit offers.reno.co.uk. Excludes Northern Ireland. Hello, 
gents. Welcome to Ernie's Pie Emporium. And what can I get you? Maybe the shish minted goat with mango coolie. Or what about pastrami and sun-dried tomato with balsamic vinaigrette? Chili sweet bread and papaya compote, anyone? Um, have you got any mince and onions? I don't want any of that foreign matches. I want British food. Why can't I buy British food in Britain? Have I got to go to the south of Spain to get egg and chips? Have we all gone mad? I might think it join me at ten tomorrow morning on TalkSport. <laughs> to do it then. Okay, now, we always like uh, your suggestions on who we should have on the show, and I've uh, got an email here from Damien from Huddersfield. Hi, Damien. Uh, he's come up with uh, some crackers lately. Uh, he let us know that uh, Major Ed Dames, one of the world's leading remote viewers, had a startling warning for us about the North Koreans. Now, I last spoke to Ed, I think, uh, ooh, nearly three years ago, so it's been a long while. And in that time, Ed has foreseen some truly frightening stuff. I'm pleased to say that he joins me on the line now. Ed, nice to talk to you again. My pleasure's mine. here in the Sandwich Islands. <laughs> You're in the Sandwich Islands now, are you? I am. Okay. Listen, before we go any further, I have an email from one of my listeners, a guy called Alan Smith. He wants me to ask you this. He said, please could you ask Major Ed Dames if remote viewing is a proven uh, is a proven technique, if it is a proven technique, he says, why can't the U.S. use it to discover the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq? The technique is replicable. But it doesn't have a theory, so it's not readily accepted in the in the West. You have to have a theory to meet the second criteria, mm -hmm. the scientific method. So without that kind of scientific uh, protocol, it isn't going to be readily accepted, and it won't be funded, and therefore it can't be accepted as a militarily uh, as a military tool, except in tactics of desperation. Now, you, uh, when you were you were in the army. In fact, you were a decorated military intelligence officer, um, and you were one of the original members of the U.S. Army prototype remote viewing training program, if I remember correctly. Correct. Could you just, Ed, before we go on and talk about some of this other stuff, could you just tell me uh, basically what remote viewing is, how it works? James, it's, it's systematic on-call clairvoyance. It, it, unlike a psychic, a psychic can sometimes have flashes of uh, perhaps what they've turned their attention to, unless it's an intrusion, something intruding in, into their mind. But for us, it's on call. We direct our conscious attention to a target, a person, place, thing, or event, and our unconscious follows, and we hold that target using some very highly specialized techniques that are easy to learn. There's just nothing like it out there. Yeah. You can think of the techniques as sort of the syntax and grammar for how unconscious communicates to conscious awareness, if you will. Okay. Now, you uh, are the executive director of, for the Matrix Intelligence Agency. This is a private consulting group. It is. Does, does this mean that people who wish to know information from, from other companies, other organizations, you will work for? No. Uh, we're pretty selective about the kinds of, of of work that we do. For instance, right now uh, we we have uh, a contract with uh, Japan, with uh, a high level group in Japan, to to look at the the locations, the actual locations of uh, DPR uh, North Korean uh, nuclear weapons. Mm. So uh, we'll take on high end uh, projects like that. Uh, by the way, have, did you see the U.S. News and World Report? Uh, special on spy stories this month? No, I didn't. Because it's out on the stands, and there's a very good background article called Clear Targets in the Mind's Eye on uh, mm -hmm. page 58 for those of your listeners who are interested in some background. Okay. As you know, we had our genesis as a military tool. Yeah. The, the, I, I gathered from this, Ed, then, that the military really don't want to use you uh, or be seen to be using you in America now. Well... It, it, things have not much changed from the, the 80s and late 70s. We have always been and, and continue to be sort of the uh, the call girls of the intelligence community. <laughs> no one wants to be seen with us in the light of day, but everyone wants to call us uh, in, in, in the hours of darkness. 
So that's we're still like that today. Are you expecting a call from uh, Bush at some time to see if you can't give them a little more information about the uh, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq or not? I have a direct line to, into McDill Air Force Base to U.S. Special Operations Command, so that if if I've got something, I send it immediately there. And uh, they usually do not call me. If they did, it would have to be through a cutout because they'd have to have plausible denial. We're still a hot potato. Mm. We're still very much a white elephant in terms of, of uh, a political risk to careers. Okay. Can you, I mean... It... <sighs> I know it's difficult for you to tell me exactly what's going on, but um, you, you or some of uh, some of the other operatives could sit, could sit. You presumably do this in a in a room where you have a special. You sit there, and you actually can can uh, transport your yourself to this other place or and, and see what's going on. Is that that's more or less how it works, isn't it? No, no. We're really it's it's if you think of of mind as a unitary thing that there's only one grand collective mind that we all uh, share. We're all part that of. That we all share. Okay. Yes. Mm. And your brain, it, your brain is not your mind. Your brain is think of it as an oscillator, okay. uh, a radio receiver. We simply tune into a pattern of information in a very in a very systematic way. We tune into a pattern of information. Let's say. Uh, your let's say your your best friend's location at this moment in time so there's a chain of custody there we our unconscious has no problem it's very unambiguous knowing that there's james whale and that we're assuming you have a best friend if not we'll, we'll have nonsense back out as an output but mm. there it, it, it unconscious is very facile has no problem uh, being directed or tuning into a, any pattern of information that we desire do you get this information? I may backtrack one moment okay. we don't think there are weapons of mass destruction uh, in Iraq you don't no we know there are some gas uh, there, we know that there were some um, uh, mounted uh, warheads that contained a uh, uh, chemical agent and we know that they and my, my group the Matrix Intelligence Agency knows that there were biological warfare experiments uh, uh, concealed within the Department of Agriculture, but per se, there really are no other weapons. Did Bush know this, do you think, when he went in? I, I don't know, James. I honestly don't know. So that, that if you, if people were to, uh, to, to take your, at your word or if you went public with this, if you like, it would damage the Bush government? I don't think there's much that could damage the Bush government. He <laughs> seems to have uh, have many lives. Okay. He's used his ninth one. <laughs> right. Let, let me. Let, I just want to try and get this in my mind. Is it when you when you do it when you are in the business of remote viewing? I mean, do you see pictures in your mind's eye? Is that how you get the information? Do you get a feeling? How does how does it come to you? Actually, viewing is a misnomer. We have very little of our the information that we have is is visuals. In fact, we know as professionals that if you do if one does have a clear picture in their mind's eye uh, while they're remote viewing that's always imagination a, 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 a dim fleeting blurry visual that was there and it's gone that's usually associated with the target but there's much more to it than that it we put together pieces it's think of a painting an oil painting where you build up the scene layer upon layer upon layer that way the more time that one spends directing their attention toward a target, the more layers of paint you get and the more detail emerges. So for instance, because of that, we, we cannot operate real time. If we were trying to track Saddam Hussein right now, we would fail. By the time my team would put together a picture of where he was, he would have already moved. Is it? So it's not a real time. I see. Is it true you can teach children to read their parents' minds? Uh, it, it, I have uh, a children's kit, that's, uh, children's ESP kit that's debuting now in Japan. And uh, yes, I'm teaching children <laughs> ESP protocols. Uh, I, I, it's a cute little website, readyourparentsmind.com, yeah. readyourteachersmind.com. But uh, my emphasis in teaching now, and I spread, I, I divide my efforts between teaching sure. the public. I may come to London and teach you. And well, I'd like you to come. I'd like you to come to London and come on my show sometime. Why don't uh, I tell you what? I'll only do that if you agree to allow me to teach you. I'd like you to teach me. Okay, okay. Then then I'll drop by. Okay. Maybe how's January or February? Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Good. I'll, I'll, now, I'll swing by. Let me uh, just remind people who want to check out your website. It's uh, remote viewing, all one word. Two thousand and three. 
dot com. Uh, and if people go to uh, the information page about my program on Talk Sports website, they will find out all about Major Ed Dames there as well. Um, you know, I, I just taught Sir Ben Kingsley. I put him through a crash course. I, I play a cameo role. I know. I'm going to talk to you about that as well. I've got, I've got lots to talk to you about. And uh, I thought, you know, you might be able to get me an interview with uh, Tom Cruise as well. I have trouble getting in. He's making the movie I'm in. <laughs> in fact, you've got a role playing an FBI remote viewing instructor. I have a cameo role, yes, yeah, huh? in, in that movie. But oh. it was more, it was a, a, a great deal of fun to teach Sir sure. Ben. Okay, I'm going to take a break. I want to come back after that. All right, Ed, thanks. I found my thrill. Back in the days when cars were gigantic street cruisers. Sugar. John F. Kennedy was the President of the United States of America. And bikinis were celebrating their breakthrough. It was the time when music still came from the jukebox. Finally, the greatest tracks from that era have been combined on one unique CD compilation. Seems the oldies jukebox. 160 original recordings on eight CDs. That's more than 130 top 10 singles for an only $29.95 plus postage. Call us now, 0870-020-1124. That's the oldies jukebox. How do you like it styled? You know, I'd like it layered, sort of quite feathery with a wispy fringe. Yeah. But I'd still like it quite natural looking. Yeah, look, I brought some magazines in here. See Justin, oh, slide right. out at the front with a touch of Ronan's at the back. Oh, what colour are you using? Oh, you know, just like a burnt cup of semi-permanent shimmer. Oh. Just because you look after your skin doesn't mean you have to behave like a girl. Nivea for Men Double Action Face Wash cleanses thoroughly without drying out your skin. Hairspray, of course. Go on in, just a whisper. Nivea. For men. The following service provided by F Text. For customer support, call 08707 60 67 68. Messages cost up to £1.50. Standard network rates apply. You must be over 18 to use the service. Hello, boys. Are you alone? Fancy some one on one adult fun? Grab your mobile and text me or one of my girlfriends, and we can have a private chat. Write a text message saying fun and send it to 82333. No one will know. Just text the word fun and send it to me on 82333. On 1089 and 1053 AM, the UK's number one commercial radio station is Talk Sport. James Webb. Okay, welcome back. I'm speaking with Major Ed Dames, the world's foremost authority on remote viewing. Uh, Ed's talking to us from his home in the Sandwich Islands. Uh, Ed runs a company called the Matrix Intelligence Agency. Um, Ed, let's uh, let's move to Japan, if we may. Um, the Japanese certainly seem to uh, take very seriously what you do, don't they? They do. Most of the interest in uh, remote viewing these days in this era is in uh, the U.S. and in Japan. Now, um, what are the Japanese interested in at the moment? Well, uh, Asahi TV, uh, Channel 10, is a major network there. They've, they had inv begun to... Uh, began inviting me uh, to Japan a number of months ago to do a series of specials. I declined because I was uh, too busy, but I said I'll come on one uh, uh, one condition: if you if you film me and my team searching for missing children, because that's a, a public service that I do. Hmm. And uh, they agreed. So I, I do a series each month, a uh, two-hour special live and in the field on, on searching for missing children in uh, Japan. But they're, they're do you have, uh, do you have success doing that? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. yes, we do. In fact, there's a German documentary team that will be here on the island uh, next week to watch me personally dig up uh, a body of a missing young man. Sad story. You, you, know, you already know where this... Um Yes, oh, yes, he was uh, he was buried by uh, some, some perpetrators in a, in a crime that he was involved in, and uh, we use our techniques and methods to to home in on exactly. You know, you have, this this is a lot of work. Uh -huh. It takes about two weeks, sometimes three weeks, to do something like this. Again, it's not a real time intelligence collection modality. Sometimes we can know immediately something. For instance, if an airliner went down, mm. it would only take us twenty minutes to to one hour to know what caused 
the airline of disaster. But to locate a missing person, we're talking about three weeks minimum of work. Do you want to, um, it just occurred to me, I mean, I, we haven't spoken for a number of years. Um, do you have any, any thoughts on 9-11? Um, no, I, not at this juncture. I don't have any thoughts. Um, that you want to share with me? Yeah. Okay. I think that, I think that upcoming events will actually, and sadly, eclipse even that in terms of, of world events. I'm talking about Korea now. Yeah. I think we should move on and talk about that. That's one of the, the things that um, that you've been warning about that uh, your team have uh, have seen. Is this what the actually there is one thing I could say about 9/11. As a former intelligence uh, officer at very high levels of, of my my country's uh, government, I can tell you now that I prided myself as an intelligence analyst and operator. But I would I never ever nor any of my colleagues would have predicted the modus operandi and the tactics used in that attack. It just was beyond any of our, our, our wildest out-of-the-box thought processes at the time. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 in World War II, kamikazes, the, the, usually the commander would not go in with his troops. The troops would go in. But this was the first time, really, that a commander would go in on, on a kamikaze attack. It was, in, in many ways, uh, you know, brilliant, beyond belief, but diabolical at the same time. Okay. This, the, it was the Japanese who wanted you to investigate North Korea, or, or did the... It, America must be very interested as well. Uh, a major book company, the president of a major book company in Japan, mm. is, uh, is commissioning that study. Um, uh, but we had already begun work on it. Prior to uh, to that, we wanted to uh, in-house. I, I commissioned a lot of in-house studies, and one of them was to determine whether or not uh, the North Koreans really did have any nuclear weapons. And in fact, they have two devices, and they're working on more now. So we were interested in where those devices are, and, and how they would intend upon using them. And we know they will use uh, both. One, perhaps, in the test to up the level of nuclear blackmail, and the other one will be used in anger. We feel strongly about that, and we're putting 100% surety on, on the second case, that one of the weapons will be used in anger, and a 60% uh, likelihood that one will be used uh, to, uh, as an open-air or underground test uh, to increase the level of nuclear blackmail. Let me just go through this again because, you know, a lot of people are listening and uh, the whole of Britain and parts of Europe listen to this show. You're telling me tonight that you, you know that North Korea will use a nuclear device in anger. In terms of, yes, that is what I'm saying. I, I stand by that and I stand by that particular statement that, that I am placing 100% likelihood on that particular event that in the near future, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea will use a nuclear weapon in anger. Now, this could be in response to a preemptive attack, but it doesn't matter. They will mm. use one. Do you know who they will use it against? They will use it against the U.S. and South Korean troops. Do you know what the... Uh, I mean, have you foreseen the response to that or not? No. After you get... After we run into... And it, mind is outside of time, and you can mm. pop up look over the horizon to a certain degree but if there's a lot of chaos on the horizon it's difficult to to perceive information through that kind of chaos so uh, it would be it's like a big mountain you can see the mountain but you can't see behind it you see i'm i'm i'm, <clears throat> I'm lost to understand the thought processes that must be going through the the, the nuts who run north korea they can't survive a nuclear war it won't be a nuclear war, James. It'll be the use of nuclear weapons. It can't be a nuclear war, for mm. one thing. It only takes a couple of weapons sure. of that nature to be militarily decisive on a small peninsula like that. And also China's right next door, and China will stop it as soon as it starts, which is one of the... Uh, you have to look at the, yeah. the grand strategy behind all this, too. There may be one. But you nor I will never understand the mind of... Uh, Kim Jong Il or, or his father uh, and and the rest of that nation. It it, it it is not any logic that you or I are familiar with.
<laughs> because it, it, it will almost be suicide for them, won't it? It'll be the end more... I mean, presumably, nuclear devices going off on that peninsula will make that peninsula almost uninhabitable for uh, the foreseeable future. No, it'll make parts parts of the, of the peninsula uh, uninhabitable. The plume, the cloud from one or two weapons, or if we respond in, in turn moment with one or two weapons, will end up in Alaska. So, <laughs> and parts of China. That's oh, why. That's why the Chinese are not going to no. allow the continuation of this. Nor would we. Would we? So. Would it evoke a nuclear war? The Russians will stand by and watch. Well, so it's not going thing. to be a nuclear conflagration. Okay. Okay. It will be the use, the first time use since Nagasaki, of a nuclear yeah. weapon in anger. And this will, will sort of overshadow 9-11, in fact. Yes. yes. Do you know how many people will die? No. Now, you've also foreseen uh, more, more um, al-Qaeda action as well, haven't you? There is a loose al-Qaeda cell that we did not catch here in the U.S. roaming around. And uh, their target was the Diablo Valley nuclear power plant in Cal California. We were going to uh, fly an airliner into that. Mm. I talked to the FBI about this. But uh, because they could not get an airliner, uh, they, they were left on to their own devices. And they're still roaming around. And, and it's uh, the last time we tracked them. They were attempting to procure Italian mines and mine the entrances to the port of San Diego so that our nuclear uh, carriers, our boomers, would hit one of these mines. And that, the, again, the tactics this time were, uh, uh, since we were watching this time and we were looking out, we got to develop the, the, the tactics that they would use. And they were att attempting to take these mines, these anti-ship mines, and to come in close to shore on a sailboat and push the mines off the side of the sailboat. And that, that would, we're watching for a very fast a patrol, a very fast marine boat coming in to the harbor, and then so we could shoot that out of the water, that kind of thing, USS Cole type yeah. of scenario. Yeah. So we would not have been looking for something like this, and it is brilliant. So I tipped off uh, Naval and Coast Guard intelligence about that. So that's uh, that's the kind of thing we're looking for now. And we're going to take that Al Qaeda cell was responsible. We've got to take a break for the news. You want to stay with us for a bit more? I will. Okay, we'll come back in about five. So if you want a coffee or something, feel free. <laughs> well, what's the weather like in the Sandwich Islands? Uh, it's about 29.5 degrees Celsius. <laughs> it's hotter over here, believe it or not. Um, we with Major Ed Dames from uh, the Sandwich Islands talking about remote viewing after the news as well, if you want to join us. 0871 222 or send me a text at 810-89 or visit the website at talksport.net. It's sharing the chill of a plunge in the sea, a kiss on a bridge in the twilight breeze, a walk through a forest under whispering trees. Summer just isn't summer without someone to share it with. If you're looking for that vital person in your life, call the Talk Sport Singles Connection now on 0871 220 0004 and take the first step towards finding someone you belong with. It's simple, it's confidential, and it could make this summer unforgettable. The Talk Sports Singles Connection. Register now on 0871 220 0004 or click talksport.net. How do you like it styled? You know, I'd like it layered, sort of quite feathery with a wispy fringe. Yeah. But I'd still like it quite natural looking. Yeah, look, I brought some magazines in here. See Justin, oh, slide that no. at the front with a touch of Ronan's at the back. Oh, what colour are you using? Oh, you know, just like a burnt cup of semi-permanent shimmer. Oh. Just because you look after your skin doesn't mean you have to behave like a girl. Nivea for Men Double Action Face Wash. Cleanses thoroughly without drying out your skin. Hairspray, of course. Go on in, just a whisper. Nivea for Men. Eight days to go until the launch of new Soccer Bet magazine. The great new football form guide available in all good news agents and premiership grounds from August the 15th, price 120. The Talk Sport Singles Connection. Register now on 0871 220 0004 or click talksport.net. News from the UK's biggest commercial radio station, Talk Sport. From the Sky News Centre, this is Talk Sport News. Top 
stories from the Sky News Centre at 12. Sending the Bali bombers to their deaths will only cause more terrorist attacks. That's the warning from the families of the victims as the first man found guilty over the blasts was told he will face a firing squad. June Hurst lost her boyfriend Daniel Braden in the attack last October. The death sentence is, is, is not the way to punish Amrozi at all. He's a happy man. This is exactly what he's wanted. Um, it's, it's the perfect way to end his mission. He thinks he's done uh, God's work and he's going to be rewarded. It, it couldn't go better for him. A large-scale outbreak of measles could be on the cards because less kids are getting vaccinated. Researchers say fears over the safety of the MMR jab made some parents think twice about immunising their child. The man tipped to be the new leader of Welsh nationalist Plaid Cymru is under fire after claiming people were fleeing England to get away from Pakistanis and Indians. Dafit Ewan said people were moving over the border to Wales to avoid the immigrants. Michael McKevitt, the man who's masterminded the real IRA's bombing campaigns, is starting a 20-year prison sentence. His organisation was behind the OMA bombing, which kills 29 people. Northern Ireland Chief Constable Hugh Ord says the fight against terror will continue. You only have to look at the two large bombs in June, July, um, which people were trying to import into Northern Ireland, stopped by good police work, so we had to remain vigilant. It could happen again. That shows it could happen again. What we have to do is make sure we can stop it, and so far we have stopped them. Football and Joe Cole and Juan Sebastian Varane have been unveiled as Chelsea players. The two cost over £21 million and the club's not rolling out another signing before the start of the season. A Bristol City fan hopes to cycle to all of his team's games. It's also raised money for breast cancer campaign. Jer Boone says he, will, he faces well over 7,000 miles on the bike. His first real test comes in a round trip to Chesterfield for City's away start to the new season. That's the latest from the Sky News Centre. I'm Martin Smedley. Hello, gents. Welcome to Ernie's Pie Emporium. And what can I get you? Maybe the shish minted goat with mango coolie. Or what about pastrami and sun dried tomato with balsamic vinaigrette? Chili sweet bread and papaya compote, anyone? Um, have you got any mince and onions? I don't want any of that foreign matches. I want British food. Why can't I buy British food in Britain? Have I got to go to the south of Spain to get egg and chips? Have we all gone mad? I might just enjoy me at 10 this morning on Transport. Sport. Sports update. Joe Cole says he'll take the pressure of his £6.6 .6 million price tag in a stride. Cole will wear the number 10 at Stamford Bridge. He says he's been playing for so long under the spotlight, it's second nature. I've been dealing with expectations since I was 17, maybe younger since I've been in the first team at West Ham. You know, people expect me to do amazing things every time I get the ball. So I don't think there'll be much difference with that when I come here. Chelsea manager Claudio Ranieri is hinting the signings of Varane and Cole may be the last he'll make. He now thinks striker Christian Vieri will stay at Inter Milan. Ranieri thinks it's important now to concentrate their efforts on the pitch. Every day I try to build my squad, but now my focus is about the, the previews of the Champions League. This is my focus. Mark Viduka won't be travelling with Leeds today for their pre-season trip to Dublin. He says he's got a sore ankle. Manager Peter Reid's response, I'm disappointed. Parry Harrington could miss this year's final golf major, the US PGA Championship. His wife is expecting their first child and Harrington has warned he'll pull out of the tournament if the baby is born before or even during the event at Oak Hill Country Club in New York next week. England coach Clive Woodward says all 30 players picked for this year's World Cup will be used. Woodward has pinpointed Austin Healy, Ian Bolshaw, Julian White, Alex Sanderson and Lewis Moody as needing to be at the top of their game in order to be selected. We'll have more news and sport in an hour. I'm Marie Foden. On 1089 and 1053 AM, the UK's biggest commercial radio station, James Whale on Talk Sport. <laughs> Yes, hi, welcome back to the James Wells Show this uh, third, well, Friday morning now, isn't it? Actually, Friday morning. I'm uh, speaking with Major Ed Dames, who is the world's leading exponent of remote viewing. Uh, remote viewing was uh, first, I suppose, first sort of brought to people's attention in the 80s, but it was going on, Ed, wasn't it, long before that? Well, the military, the U.S. Army, had a team of uh, naturally gifted psychics in the late, uh, in the late 1970s. When remote viewing came out of the laboratory and I was tasked, I as the operations and training officer of the Army team, was tasked with developing this into a militarily useful tool, mm. 
it became these these steps, methods, and techniques became far more accurate and consistent. And so I abandoned the uh, the natural psychics and uh, unless they wanted to be trained in CRV, would, and then I trained them in the remote viewing. So but the Russians were were employing psychics even earlier than that. Uh -huh. I mean, do, is there any one or, or more, maybe, um, but any one uh, incident in, in history of uh, conflict that the remote viewers were instrumental in, in uh, saving the day? You know, we can very rarely save the day. Uh, hindsight's twenty twenty, but sometimes that's all the sight that we have in the intelligence business. And... Uh, so we didn't save the day, but we we did recreate uh, the events behind the Lockerbie explosion, and mm -hmm. so we were able to tip off the FBI about the culprits who placed the device on board the aircraft. Mm -hmm. So we we can capture, we can help capture the uh, the principals, but it's it, we work so slowly that it's difficult to prevent anything. So were the the right people were caught for the Lockerbie disaster? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you just joined us, then uh, Ed and I were talking before the news. Um, Ed's team of uh, remote viewers have been uh, working on North Korea, and the story is that North Korea is planning a nuclear uh, attack. It'll use two nuclear devices. You say one as a test to sort of threaten people with, and then they'll just all out um, attack. I wouldn't call it an attack as much as, and even a counterattack. It's just they're going to use one because attack and counterattack are terms that a logical mind would okay. use, and we're not dealing with logic there. So we're placing, again, a 60% likelihood that is my agency, private intelligence agency, is placing I as director and saying, stating, 60% likelihood of a weapon used to up the ante in terms of nuclear blackmail. That is a test, an underground or, or, surface test or even uh, a sea test and a 100% likelihood, I say again, 100% likelihood that the North Koreans will use a nuclear weapon in anger, either uh, either as a, a first strike or in response to a preemptive attack on the part of the U.S. And it will, it will come out of nowhere? There will be no sort of uh, threatening in beforehand or anything like that? I think the, what, there is one, one event that looks to presage that the use of that, and that is the collapse of a major, uh, a major, um, major talks. Now we have one coming up in the near future, ostensibly between six nations, mm. multilateral talks ab about North Korea's nuclear weapons program. It may be that when those talks collapse, and they will, that that may be the trigger right there. The, uh, now, you know when we were talking about you can't, you can't help save the day, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but surely now, with this information, the, the American government must be able to do something to, 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 to stop this happening, can't they? No, no, because if, if we had the locations of the weapons pinpoint, and one is underground in a tunnel near the DMZ, and it's a good tactic because if we attack north, if we actually cross land and the North Koreans feign, uh, uh, feign uh, uh, a retreat and fall back north, that they'll pop that weapon underneath the 2nd Infantry Division or one of the South Korean divisions. And, and that's a good strategy. It's difficult to find the weapons themselves. And even if we found them, you're still looking at 37 you know, 30,000 art artillery pieces mm. that are going to be used. And, and it will be... The, the the grimmest and the ugliest of wars, but I think it will not last long because of the Chinese uh, mm. uh, element. Mm. Well, I, okay, I know it's if would you put a time on it and all that sort of thing. I mean, but are we looking this year, next year, year after? I don't think the year after, James. I don't that the, the the conditions are the we the Western world cannot wait for the North Koreans to build more devices and to export their technology to Iran and to other countries. So what you're telling me, what you're telling me there, Ed, is that there may well be a preemptive incursion into North Korea in the same way that we did with Iraq. Not in the same way. I think that this one, if it occurs, that is a preemptive attack on the North Koreans will not be announced. There won't be a collusion or an agreement between any other nations on this one. It will be in secret. And we won't know until the tragedy happens. happens, yeah. Okay. 
Um, want to take some calls? Is that okay? People want to talk to you. Of course. Um, let's go to, to Chester in the northwest of the United Kingdom. Dave is there. Hi, Dave. You're on the air through to uh, Major Ed Dames. Hello, Dave from Chester. Hello? Dave, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Dave. Yes, very nice. Sir. Um, I've uh, had problems with some of these strange people from, uh, from, from Liverpool. Oh, it's nice that they get to since, express themselves. Since the Beatles went, you know, it's not been the same for them, really. Um, 0871 222 Julie is in Berkshire. Hi, Julie. Hello. Hi. I'm banning all Liverpudlian-sounding people from now on. Are you? To see if I care. Yeah, don't care. It's not worth it. Julie, yes. Get out. You're, you're through to Major Ed Dames. I don't want to speak to you. I want to speak to you. Oh, you want to speak to me? Yeah. Yeah, Did I see. You, uh, having a twilight zone moment. I was having a twilight yeah. zone moment, yes. I was trying to phone you. Were you? Yeah. It was you? Yeah. Well, there we are. You see, I knew I was psychic. <laughs> I better explain to Ed. I, just, I came on the air this evening, Ed, and I knew somebody had tuned in for the first time and never heard the oh, program no, no, before. I heard you before. Had you? I've been, I've been on twice before, but you, you cut me dead. I did. Why? Why did I do that? I don't know. I, I probably sounded too yeah. out of it. I don't know. Okay, third time lucky. Bye. Um, sorry about that, Ed. Uh, we no, have a quite all right. New person working the phones who won't be with me after tonight. Um, let's talk about the movie while they sort themselves out there. Uh, you haven't made the movie yet, Suspect Zero, have you? Uh, yes, yes. Oh, you have made it. It's, it's finished. Yeah. Now you were the technical uh, Tom Cruise, Paula Wagner uh, production. Uh, Paramount uh, is the studio. And I, we just finished it uh, uh, last last week, out of the can. Are you going to tell me about it, or um, is it, it is is it, are you not allowed to talk about, about it? It is about a serial killer. It's a crime uh, thriller. Right. It's about a serial killer, played by Sir Ben Kingsley, mm. who is killing serial killers that the FBI cannot find themselves, <laughs> who are who are in turn killing children. Oh dear. That sounds interesting. Uh, it is. In fact, it's right up my alley because that's what I do in real world. And I, I look for, I call them monster. I look for child killers that we're dealing with a, a, an abducted child. Huh. You have to look for bodies and, and murders. Now, not only were you the uh, technical consultant, you also had your, uh, your cameo role in this, playing a, an FBI remote viewing instructor. Um, well, they, you couldn't, have... they, they couldn't. They couldn't find anybody. I mean, they were thinking of of, of an actor, but they yeah. asked me to play myself. I said, "I'm not an actor." So they put me through a crash course, and uh, I played myself. It was a lot of fun. I'm not going to give up my day job, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah, Aaron Aaron Eckhart and Carrie Ann Moss uh, of the Matrix fans yeah. in the movie yeah. as well. Really? Mm -hmm. When's it come out? It will come out in the winter. Uh, Sir Ben, <clears throat> rumor is that uh, House of Sand and Fog is another movie that Sir Ben is in, sure. and that will air first. And they, uh, studios don't use it. I like have two movies with the same major star in it at the same time. So. Did you get to meet the stars? Did you meet Ben Kingsley? I trained him. You trained him? Oh yeah. Yeah. Trained him. Trained the director. Trained the whole cast in remote viewing. Gave him, put him, gave him for a crash course. And can they actually? I mean, can Ben Kingsley actually remote view? I don't think he can well. He, he got enough uh, down so that he c he looks good in the movie, uh, but the director can. And uh, uh, I'll be training the director uh, some more. And there's interest in, at, uh, at, on, the, on the part of uh, Tom Cruise and others at the studio level in it. Uh, and did you, I, I train did you... a lot of celebrities too. You'll you'll be my first uh, English English celebrity. Excellent, because what I can do with that tool, Ed, is uh, nobody's business. Well, I, I could probably use it. Use it, Ed. Find out where Dave and Julie live. <laughs> well, go in the girls' dressing rooms and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. You can, can you? can't you, Ed? Uh, you can't get into them, but you can throw a lens darkly. Who wants that? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Listen, we want that sort of thing. We can get them to come into the studio. We don't have to do that. Get it on the internet now. Yeah, well, exactly. Um, Ed, I want to come back finally and uh, talk about the Columbia shuttle disaster, which I think you have a, f a, a view on as well, don't you? Somewhat, yeah. Yeah, okay, we'll take a break. Back in the days when cars were gigantic street cruisers, John F. Kennedy was the president of the United States of America. And bikinis were celebrating their breakthrough. Films were finally in full color, and mankind had conquered the moon. 
It was the time when music still came from the jukebox. Finally, the greatest tracks from that era have been combined on one unique CD compilation. The Oldies Jukebox. Seems Sixty original recordings on eight CDs. That's more than 130 top 10 singles for only 29.95 plus postage. Call us now and order your own copy of the Oldies Jukebox. 0870-020-1124. That's the Oldies Jukebox. Only available by calling this number. 0870-020-1124. Are you alone? Bored? Fancy some one-on-one -on -one adult fun? Grab your mobile and text the word FUN to 82333. Instantly chat and make adult text friends from around the UK. It's fun, flirty, and one-on-one. -on -one. Text FUN to 82333. Service provided by F-Text. For customer support, call 08707 60 67 68. Messages cost up to £1.50. Standard network rate supply. You must be over 18 to use the service. On 1089 and 1053 AM, the UK's number one commercial radio station is Talk Sport. I'm going to freak your head out now. Welcome back to the James Whale Show with uh, Major Ed Dames from his home in the Sandwich Islands. We're talking about remote viewing. If you want to find out more, go to remoteviewing2003.com or if you check out my uh, homepage at talksport.net, you can find out all about Ed Dames there as well. Um, Ed, I'm just going to, uh, you know, it's a, it's a strange thing, radio talk shows. You've no idea who's out there and uh, I just want to take a couple more calls if that's okay. Absolutely. You know, there's nothing anybody can say that can offend us, really, so here we go. Uh, Kevin, who's in Hertfordshire. Hi, Kevin, you're on the air through to Major Ed. Hello there, Ed. Hi. Hi. Um, I'd like your opinion, really. For some time I've been putting together a book. I'm actually writing a book about remote viewing. Um, I'm what you would call, I suppose, a, a pseudo-scientist, where you've obviously taken the very professional route. Um, and I know you have a vested interest in the uh, in the selling of it, really, because you sell various products or, or courses, don't you? Yes, I, te I, I teach and I have a couple of products I, for adults and for uh, children. Yeah. Um, what I'm actually doing is the, I had a, a group of people that I got together, that, and we did it with all the proper forms, and, and we had some pretty good results of, of target remote viewing. What's yes. target remote viewing? It's, uh, well, there's various ways of doing it from what I understand, but um, it's had to be... So, uh, hang, on, hang on, Kevin. I mean, are you a remote viewer? Is that what you're saying, or...? Yes. You are? In, in as much as I've carried out experiments um, under the guidelines of what I've read about and how to do it, complete with uh, taking the videos and filling in all the paperwork, having you, as, as I, many... Yeah. Are you talking about stuff that you, you've got from uh, Ed Dames? Uh, various books. There's quite a few books and uh, yeah. websites out there. Okay. Yeah? And, and what it is, really, I mean, obviously you're from uh, Ultra Professional. Yeah. What's your question for Ed, uh, Kevin? I would like to know if he thinks it's um, worth me as a, uh, not coming from a military background, actually writing and publishing this book. I mean, would it, does he think it might be like poo-pooed, if you like? Absolutely. Sorry and to uh, sorry to interrupt, Ed. Uh, uh, sorry, does that make uh, sense, Ed? Uh, uh, you're, yes, you're making sense. I, I you know what? I, I encourage you. If, if if you enjoy, if you really enjoy what you're doing, then I, I fully encourage you, and and uh, I support that. Just just know that it won't be it won't be poo-pooed. It just may not sell many copies. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, if it doesn't, it doesn't. But it, the, the basic so, uh, it, Kevin, uh, the interest in remote viewing will explode towards the end of the year. It will just explode. There will not be the demand for teachers, the demand for products, the demand for 
more, uh, there just won't be enough resources to fill it for a couple of years. So why, why, do you think, why do you think at the end of the year it will explode? Uh, because that's when uh, Suspect Zero, the movie, will come out in oh, I see. Hollywood. Okay. <clears throat> and, and, and in fact, I'll, 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 I, may, I may have a television series that uh, I've been asked to do books and television series many times. But there's a quality one coming along. They have to give me what I want. It looks like they're going to do that again, uh, predominantly pursuing uh, a fugitive. Mm. And, and so, I, I, I've been of the opinion that this would go pretty big soon. And obviously I'd like to be part of it. Uh, yeah, I think your opinion is correct, and, and you probably will be. Yeah. Kevin, thank you for your call. Let's go to Imran in Sheffield. Hi, Imran. Hi. Imran, hi. Uh, I've got a few questions for your guest, Ed. Okay. Carry, away. Carry right on. Okay, first question. Which, which Muslim countries are, is America planning to attack in the near future? Does he know? <laughs> what uh, would he say, I wonder? I don't know. He doesn't know. I don't know. In fact, uh, I think we'll have our hands tied, uh, in, so tied up in Korea that uh, we will have exhausted all our offensive resources. So okay. It's a moot point. Uh, does, does, does he believe the CIA knew about September 11 before it happened? I was connected with the Department of Defense, and our job was uh, military intelligence, not political and economic intelligence. And so... Even though I coordinated with those people and knew them well, uh, the answer is I don't know. I don't know if they knew. Okay. Does he know which Muslim countries are, are developing nuclear missiles? Yes. Which, which ones? Well, they all want to. But but which ones the, uh, are actually doing it? Uh, Iran. They're the only ones? Yes. Uh, can I ask him, before Pakistan developed nuclear missiles, did, did America knew? Did America know? Yes. So why did they not stop them? Uh, it's a long story, and it's also classified. But you know, you know that America knew. Yes. So uh, surely, if they knew, they would have tried to stop them. Surely. That's the, uh, that's an assumption, and it's a presumptuous one. But any country in the world that is trying to develop nuclear missiles, America will will always try to stop them. That's also a presumption, and it's presumptuous. But they're trying to stop North. They're trying to stop Iran. They, they don't, they are angry that North Korea has done it? That's right, they're very selective. Why? It's a long story. It's political in nature. Why don't you talk my about job. it? My, I, my job, is, I, as a, a trained, I'm a trained observer. Okay. And I'm an operator. I, my job is not speculation and politics. Okay, do you, somebody do you, else's job. Maybe yours. Do you, do you know uh, what Al-Qaeda is going to do next? I know what one cell is trying to do in the continental United States. Other than that, no. My resources are spread too thin to know uh, anything other than that. Do you have any, let me ask you a question here. Do you have any idea maybe where Osama bin Laden is? I, I think there's a good chance that he's deceased, James. And uh, uh, we're not tracking either Saddam Hussein or Osama bin Laden because uh, my my intelligence can't bring closure to that case, even if we pinpoint uh, a location, dead or alive, or mm. either one or both of those individuals okay. are. There's nothing. There's really no, nothing of substance that we're, we're giving. Okay, Imran, thank you for your call. Uh, let's go to Darren, who is uh, in Northern Ireland, in County Armagh. Yes, Darren, you're on the air through to Ed. Hi. I wanted to ask you guest about um, John F. Kennedy, JFK, if he had any information on him. Or what John happened around that time? You mean about uh, his death? Yeah. He was, uh, unfortunately, from the, in terms of remote viewing, we've described a flechette that was fired from within, inside the car that penetrated his Adam's apple and exited the back of uh, his neck, uh, in addition to the high-velocity bullet that hit him uh, and was fired from outside the car. Can you, can you tell me a flechette, did you say? Yes, a flechette is a needle-like dart that's uh, made out of tungsten or aluminum or so or, or metal like that. It looks like a dart. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't expand like a bullet when it when it penetrates a target. It was fired from appearing appears to have been fired from within the car from a device in the dashboard. And, Interesting. And why why did they want to assassinate Kennedy? Oh, now you're asking the wrong person. Oh, My okay. job is a trained observer. Yeah. My job Classified. is to support what we right. 
I, I was going to ask the same question, but now James has his own brother. But I, I want to ask you this. Is it your belief that an element within the United States government at that time wanted to get rid of certain members of the Kennedy family and did? Are you asking me, Darren? Yes. Yes. Nice one. Thank you, Darren. Um, Ed, let's uh, talk a little bit about the Columbia shuttle disaster. Okay. Because you, you remote viewed this situation, I believe. We uh, we did as a uh, actually as a practice a training. You know, we train all the time, mm. so we we pick interesting targets as well as mundane ones. We have to be trained to do to, to run a uh, to be able to accurately perceive and describe a wide range of events and things. And Columbia was one that we worked. So uh, the we know that the there was a, a an optical fiber an, a conduit that was severed. Mm. Very quickly between the main computer, the, the computer in the cockpit, and the control surfaces. And that's as far as we went. So we're assuming that, uh, that a, a tile or a piece of uh, something else, another part of the spacecraft, uh, severed, cut that uh, cable. There was no control after that cable was cut. That, uh, and that's all I know about that. It looks like it was an accident. And did NASA know uh, that this was likely to happen uh, right from after launch of this? Because I believe one of these tiles came off and caused some problem during the launch. I don't know, James. That isn't anything we uh, that we, we turn our attention to. And if we did, that would be actually be a complex, set, an ensemble of information that would be complex and would take us a long mm. time. Mm. Uh, just by the nature of the beast, the way it's set up, it's uh, it, it's if you if you are conducting an internet search and you use a search engine, think about the question that you just asked me and how you would formulate that into a question to stick into the database. And you can see the kinds of problems that we run into because it's you have ambiguity, and therefore it, the, okay. the questions may be equi the answers may be equivocal. Uh, are you working? For in America, for the police. I mean, you were talking about the uh, missing children in Japan. I mean, do you do the same stuff in America? I, I do the same stuff, but it's gratis. I pay my viewers uh, out of my own pocket for that. It's a public service. It's kind of like giving back. You know, I, I feel very fortunate to to have learned this and, and uh, to do this. As okay. I love my work. And what sort of what, what sort of results do you get? I mean, do you get sort of fifty fifty, um, sixty four uh, people. Yeah, oh, it's a mixed bag. It is a mixed bag. We have to. We never do. We stopped dealing with parents a long time ago. That's a mistake, because because of the speed at which we work, the slow speed at which we work. If parents once they get over their grieving process, there, you know, there's anger, mm -hmm. the human, human, the human condition. And if we cannot find a child or a child's body quickly, then the anger's turned toward us. So we only work with law enforcement. But this is the way that we work, James. We do the entire project ourselves from start to finish. We go to the field ourselves and look for the child or the child's body. Mm. We do not, and we bring it all the way to closure. I'm doing that uh, next week with, in the case of a young man who disappeared here on the ions. And we I do mean, that for the camera. Yeah. But, I mean, so you've with already, us when we work. Yeah. It's with us in our war room when we analyze the data. Mm. It's with us in the field when we go looking for the target. So you you haven't physically uh, found this this uh, boy yet. Uh, I believe uh, my team believes that we're within 20 feet of the body, and the body in this case is buried in the ground. Most children are not buried there. Uh, abductors usually just throw the bodies away, but this this young man is buried in sand. Um, and uh, uh, we're within 20 feet, so it won't take long to locate the body. We can get, we can narrow it down to two feet, but I think we're okay. So you're, you're a, a TV crew are going to film you going out into the field next week, and you will actually dig up the remains of an abducted child? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, this, in this case, it's a young man, a 24-year-old uh, young man. And you know he's dead? Yes. Okay. And uh, I mean, do his parents know this? And... No, we, again, we don't work with the parents uh, because that's too much for them to bear. Mm. And if something went wrong, we did not How? find the body. We would just subject them to undue angst. Okay. How long has this guy been missing? Eight, 18 months, exactly. Do you know from remote viewing how he died? Yes, I do. Yeah, we checked that out, too, because we want to know what went down. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, he OD'd on a double dose of ecstasy and LSD. Mm. 
and his suppliers panicked. The actual suppliers, he was there in one of the suppliers' homes when this happened, according to our information, and that's life in prison. Mm. So they got rid of the evidence. I mean, I'm not, um, <clears throat> I'm not wishing to, uh, to seem rude, Ed, but some may say if you know this information and if you know where this body is buried, you should actually be going and, and uh, getting it sorted now rather than waiting for the TV cameras to come with you. Uh, we already made one foray there. It just so happens that, well, you know, it's a good thing, though. It is a good thing. to have. It's a documentary team. Very, uh, In fact, uh, Stephen Hawkins will be one of the presenters on this documentary. Mm. And it's good for the public to see this. I'm not, in one way, yes. I'm taking advantage of the situation to apprise the public of what remote viewing is and what it isn't. And number two, to educate the public as to the way we have to work and how difficult it is. So, yes, I am taking advantage of this particular situation. It's a lick on me if that's immoral or unethical, but that's what I'm doing. Presumably, this will be one of the first times ever that someone will say, well, we, you know, you're, you're putting yourself, your reputation, if you like, on the line here. You're saying, I know where this body is and I'm going to take these guys uh, and show them. That's right. Then I'll pick up the phone as, as, as soon as we find the body and call the police. Police already know I'm looking, so yeah. it, it won't take them long to get will you, where, where, When are you doing, what day are you doing this? On the eight, uh, actually it's the uh, 18th of uh, this month. Well, maybe we can talk the day after and you can tell me what happened. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going to take another break. And, uh, come back to you in a moment, okay? I'll be here. All right. Listen, mates, I've come to a decision. We're going to go straight. Oh, legit? Why, boss? Because I've found something that's even better. What's that, eh? Remember the business with that muppy Charlie? He missed out on thousands because his endowment policy was surrendered instead of being sold to AAP. He could have got a much bigger wedge. Well, I won't make that mistake. Once I got the dosh from AAP, it's down to Eastbourne for me in the rain. We've always wanted our own little poodle parlor by the sea. Hold on. What about me? Well, I'm going to need someone to swipe up all them doggy clippings in I. If you have an endowment policy and you're thinking of surrendering, don't. You could get up to 35% more cash by selling it to AAP instead. Call now on 0845 1967 You've got nothing to lose, but you could have a great deal to gain. Ow! Put him down, Pixie. That's 0845 1967 AAP are regulated by the FSA. The following service provided by Ftext. For customer support, call 08707 606768. Messages cost up to £1.50. Standard network rate supply. You must be over 18 to use the service. Hello, boy. Are you alone? Fancy some one-on-one -on -one adult fun? Grab your mobile and text me or one of my girlfriends, and we can have a private chat. Write a text message saying fun and send it to 82333. No one will know. Just text the word fun and send it to me on 82333. It will have been two months, 35 days, 18 hours, 103 minutes and 1,020 seconds that we've been without Premiership football. And it seemed like an eternity, hasn't it? Soon, the waiting will be over. Football First returns to talk sport. Adrian Durham brings you all the games, all the goals, all the time. The Premiership is back August the 16th on Talk Sport. Hawksby and Jacob. Yes. We are Hawksby and Jacob. That's Johnny McCann in the background. Hawksby and Jacob. Yeah, we are Hawksby and Jacob. Get the fiesta feeling with the Hawksby and the Jacobs this afternoon from 2 on 1089 and 1053 JM. Talk Sport. <laughs> yeah. Okay, welcome back. And uh, Major Ed Dames is with me. Don't forget, if you want to check out Ed's website, uh, if you want to find out more about remote viewing, it is www.remoteviewing2003.com. Uh, Simon and Paul, you're on the air. Through to Ed. Hi, James. Hi, Ed. Uh, I was interested if Ed had ever remote viewed any aliens, and if he had... Um, whether they were um, ethereal beings or extra-dimensional or beings like us, 
And um, with relation to the Greys, does he know what their intention are, are is <laughs> from remote viewing? Well, that's a good one, Simon. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Ed? Yes. Um, there's only so much you can do. When, I mean, most of our work is against problem sets where we can bring closure. Okay? Yeah. For instance... The, uh, the young man who, who's, who went missing and whose body we're going to dig up. That's closure. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. So if we turn our attention to these other dimensional or these trans-dimensional or these interdimensional or extraterrestrial entities, if they exist, our word is as good as anyone else about what we perceive. I mean, it's interesting stuff, but we can't do anything with it. So that's why we don't spend a lot of time with it. Having said that, Yes, my team even all the way back in the military days in the, in, the, in the early 80s, 1984, I was tasking my military team with looking at things that NORAD and and, uh, and other agencies, the North North uh, uh, North North American Air Defense Command <laughs> was with looking you. at. Yeah, God, that was a long time ago. We were looking at that, and yes, there are things, that a, lot of, a lot of robotic vehicles that are UFOs that do not belong to us. They are not the U.S. Aurora program. They've been around for a long time. Are they under control by an intelligence? Yes, they are. The intelligence is somewhere else. Are there, are there other uh, um, supernatural entities around us? Well, they're really natural. I mean, angels. Uh, here you have a military officer died in the wool. A soldier, I'm, I'm, I'm stating that our... Remote viewing indicates, in no uncertain terms, that angels are quite real, and and we can perceive a data associated with their activities. But what do we do with that? Mm. Well, you probably don't talk about it too much, Ed. Otherwise, people may start sort of um, suggesting that uh, <laughs> that you be uh, put into a padded room somewhere. No, those days are over. Burning at the stake pattern, no, nobody does that anymore. Most of your callers and I would, would, would you know, fit that criterion. What about, and listen, you lose, tell you lose your audience if you push, if you push, you can push the envelope, but if you yeah. pop it, there yeah. goes, there goes sure. the whole, the baby goes out with the bathwater. So, tell me about angels. I mean, I mean, I, I, I seriously, because I interviewed uh, somebody the other day talking about the reality of angels, quite fascinating, quite, there's a, there's a, a cult of the angel, if you will. Um, what, what do you perceive them as being? I mean, they're not, they're not sort of rushing around with harps and uh, no. wings and stuff no. like that. So. Uh, I think of them as mathematically different than us, yeah. dimensionally different than us. And they do uh, think of them in another dimension, but at the same time able to perceive activities in, in your mind. Okay. And not necessarily influence it so much, but they can, they can interact at that level. But they do, they can intrude under certain circumstances in, in yeah. this particular dimension. And for some people who see aliens or think they see aliens or, or have an alien encounter, that what they're really doing is uh, they have an encounter with these, uh, these angels. Yes, the instances mm. where there's a glowing white sphere that people who are so-called abductees describe. In those instances where a white sphere, sometimes two white spheres, one will be smaller than the other in a room, a bit, and at a, at a time when someone says they've been abducted, those are for all intents and purposes the form that angels take when they intrude into mm. this dimension. Simon? Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks Simon. Sir. Bye. Um, Miriam in London. Hello, Miriam. Hello, James, um, and hello, Ed. Thank you for asking George your um, talk this evening. A couple of questions, actually. Um, some years ago, I wrote a, um, I read a book by um, Tim Raff Riffat on the remote viewing. Um, I always got the impression that um, it required somebody with psychic and um, clairvoyant abilities to um, to really, um, you know, be able to accomplish remote viewing. Um, and this, my second question is. Um, the, uh, the, the, the the first one is an implied question that was actually a statement. Right. I mean... And if I can address that. Yes, Tim, can. Uh, Tim just cut and paste. He has no first-hand knowledge of our remote viewing. He just cut and paste from many, many books. So that's that. The other part of that, of that statement to, to address that is this. No, you, it, it is an innate faculty. This sixth sense is innate in all of us, and it's a trained skill. 
It right. is a trained skill and it is not difficult to learn. It's very different. We don't allow for the time integration of sense impressions. We just record the data, pick up pieces of a puzzle and put them back together again. Can we just spend, sorry to, to yeah. interrupt, can we just spend a little time in just making this, uh, this point? So what you're really saying, Ed, is that you don't need to be a psychic person, a medium type person or anything else. You can be almost anybody, and probably that, anybody. That's right. You can, can actually... Sorry. One need not be psychically good. It is an innate faculty, and it's easy to teach. It's easy to learn. It's frustrating at first, but no more frustrating than learning how to ski or ice skate or construct a sentence in a yeah. language that you're, you're not familiar with. So th this, is, this is something that, that our forefathers probably used without even realizing it is something that perhaps the, the human being has f had forgotten how to use. I think that may be true. Uh, the reality, I do not know, but that could very well be true. I know that Australian Aboriginals, for instance, still use this very effectively today because they don't have a lot of noise that they have to attend to. All the things that we worry about as Westerners, which shampoo should I use today? What should I wear? Is my dog eating enough cheese? On and on and on. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, Ed, can I ask you a second, the second question, please? Um, the Princess Diana um, road crash, was that an actual accident or was it... Um, deliberate. In other words, was she assassinated? Uh, I have no idea, Miriam, and I would not lie to you. If I, if I, if I had some information and I couldn't say, I would say I can't talk about it. But I, I've never looked at that, nor do, would I have any desire or motivation to. Did you uh, Did you ever think of looking into that, Ed, as a matter of interest? No. Because it's, I mean, I don't know if it's as much of a story in America as it is here. Still, well, it's people, very much so. I mean, yeah. our English yeah. friends. Uh, I mean, were more there are still. Long. There are still doubts about whether that was actually a genuine accident, according to um, various books I've read. Again, um, you know, um, one in particular was not um, written by a flaky people, mm. uh, but has done quite a substantial amount of research. Um, and, um, you know, it does leave a lot of questions unanswered and doubts in, one mi in one's mind as to whether she was in fact... You know, a, a car accident was made to look, um, or rather an assassination was made to look like a, you know, a car accident. Well, a conspiracy theorist would have a field day with yeah, this, sure. and, and I don't know the truth. I just, you know, I, I'm as familiar as much mm -hmm. with the media as you are. It's still, probably nothing that I would ever look at in terms of using my team's uh, skills. Uh, it's it, that it's just that's the, just the way it is. Mm -hmm. What you're saying about people being able to learn remote viewing, this means at some stage uh, we could all take lessons and basically um, get to know what everybody is thinking about everybody else. A world without secrets. Yeah. Scary. Isn't it? That's interesting. Scary. That's interesting coming from a former intelligence officer, Ed, really. You think that, that uh, there's a possibility that we will have a world without secrets or not? Anything's possible. That one of the reasons my focus is on children right now is because they are, it's so easy to teach them. They're so facile and can pick this up so quickly. The protocols are different. They don't have the lexicon to express what they're perceiving that you and I do. Mm -hmm. But as the, as the, if the skill is in place first and the lexicon grows later on, it's easier for them to objectify what they're turning their minds to. And Japanese children are just eating this up right now. Uh, and, uh, Next Sunday, a big booth in Japan and Tokyo, uh, where children are buying this kit. In fact, uh, it's a brand new kit. Uh, you can go to the readyourparentsmind.com or readyourteachersmind.com site and see what that kit looks like. My attention. I want to go to China and teach Chinese children because China has one quarter of the world's population and therefore one quarter nominally of the world's children. I want children to be able to learn this because when you do. You can never look at the world the same way again. You now become very cognizant of of the consequences of your actions. And what about teaching the American children? That's happening. That's happening soon. It's happening now. American children, then Japanese children, and then Chinese children. Mm. And then me. Right. Good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you're teachable. Yeah, James, I think you're probably a lost cause. Uh, yeah, I think I probably am. I think <laughs> yeah. I probably am. Miriam, thank, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, anyway. Bye. And, Ed, thank you. Um, Ed, thanks very much indeed for the time. You spent a lot longer with me than I had anticipated. I hope that That's hasn't true. sort of That's ruined your day. Fine. I'll see you in January or February in my classroom in London. Excellent. And I, uh, I'm, perhaps we can talk in the next week or so after you've uh, discovered this uh, missing lad and... Uh, 
we can see what the sort of world's press has made of this, because presumably if you go out and you uncover this in front of the uh, cameras, the, uh, uh, the press are going to be very interested indeed, I would think. Uh, probably, probably. You're also going to have to watch out, of course, in case they think you might have had something to do with it as you knew where the body was. You're going to have to prove that. I run into that all the time, yes, as you can imagine. Okay. Ed, nice speaking with you. A uh, pleasure is mine. Thank Thanks you for lot. the invitation. Bye-bye. Major, before doing that again, why do I keep doing that? I don't know why I have no idea why. I, I've, I've got this fixation in this studio of... of I've got this one thing turns me off and I keep wanting to do that. It must be some sort of psychological thing. Anyway, uh, Major Ed Dames, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Ed, the f world's foremost um, authority on remote viewing. Um, some people believe it, some people don't. It's a fascinating thing though and uh, we have to watch. I've always thought we've got to watch the North Koreans. We have got to watch the North Koreans. Um, and if you want to find out more about this, you can either go to our website, go to my uh, information page uh, on James Whale at talksport.net or go directly to www.remoteviewing2003.com. We'll be back, finishing off the program. Ten minutes or so, of course, about anything you like, right after this. Put some sizzle in your summer with the Talk Sports Singles Connection. Everybody loves the sunshine. Call 0871 220 0004 and tell us a bit about yourself. And we'll get to work compiling a list of potential local partners already looking for someone like you. 100% soul detection at the Talk Sports Singles Connection. 0871 220 0004 or join online at talksport.net. Toasters are really straightforward. You put in the bread and up pops the toast. And direct payment, the new way of getting incapacity benefits, is really straightforward too. The money pops up in an account of your choice on the day it's due. Then you can collect it whenever and wherever is convenient. If you get incapacity benefit by order book or gyro check, you'll be getting a letter and leaflet explaining your options and what to do next. If you haven't received your letter yet, you will. But if you want more information, call 0800 107 2000. Direct payment, giving it to you straight. If the sound of the post arriving each morning fills you with dread because of debt, you need to call W3 Debt Solutions. We could help you find a long-term solution. Subject to acceptance, we could even reduce the amount of debt you have to pay. Get debt off your mind. Call W3 Debt Solutions on free phone 08000 326 333. 100% soul detection at the Talk Sports Singles Connection. 0871 220 0004. Calls charged at national rates. And Jacob. Well, we are Hawksby and Jacob. That's John McCann in the background. Hawksby and Jacob. Yeah, we are Hawksby and Jacob. Get the fiesta feeling with the Hawksby and the Jacobs this afternoon from 2 on 1089 and 1053 JM. Talk Spore. <laughs> What are you playing? I'm playing an Indian harmonium, which is actually a British instrument. was taken by uh, um, by the British uh, missionaries um, in, in yeah. to, to India. Play, play me a tune on it, Shoka. I don't know what I can play for you. Well, go on. You must play something. This is a raga malkos, which is a... Usually played after the, all the ragas in Indian music are set on certain times. Okay. So around the clock you got different. For instance, if what you play now you won't, it'll sound terrible tomorrow afternoon. Right. What would you play about this time then? So this is about um, ten to ten to midnight. I suppose you could play a raga darbari. <laughs> On top of it, yeah. Hey? Right. You sing, sing singing. I'll play the, the. Can you do that? Ah. <laughs> Ash, can you do the singing? Yeah, I'll Ash. do the singing, man. I'll play yeah. this little tinkly bell. I remember we had that Indian guy on. I yeah. remember how we yeah. did it. Okay. All right. Go on. You you start off. Show cut. We'll follow. This can be the thing to the Jamil yeah. Walid show. Yeah. 
Multicultural Jamil Walid Show. Hi, this is he. Uh, Baz from one said, email me, said, uh, Hi, Jamil. Uh, the way of the world is so bad at the moment, maybe it's time you ousted Blair, or better still, Nutcase Bush, took over the Western world. I'd vote for you, James. Uh, that way, the West and the East will get along far better because you are the voice of reason. It's true. Uh, if you were in power, Jamil, we wouldn't have these little thieves running riot. The little scumbags should have their hands chopped off. That'll teach them. I quite agree. I quite agree. Thank you very much indeed, Baz. Um, I say, I'm thinking of the, the stupidity of the uh, the guy who wants to be the uh, the leader of the <laughs> the Welsh nationalists who uh, accuses uh, the English of. Um, uh, wanting to uh, buy houses in Wales so they can get away from Indian and Pakistanis. But, I mean, he must be completely thick and, and twisted, this man. Uh, there are probably uh, more Asians in, in Cardiff and Swansea than a lot of other areas. And I tell you, I mean, although it's, a, it's a cliche, I know, but listen, one of the, one of the best things that the, the Asians have brought to this country, in, uh, British Asians, uh, is the food and uh, whatever you're saying. I tell you, there are uh, some places in Wales where you, in Cardiff in particular, where you can get excellent, excellent food of all kinds of, you know, uh, Bangladeshi food, um, uh, uh, f um, oh gosh, um, what's the, the uh, da, 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 Karachi, there's a, a special Karachi curry place out of the place, anyway. So I don't know what that bloke was going on about, quite frankly, he didn't obviously know what he was talking about. Uh, right, who's on? I've got Paul in Brighton. Oh, and if you want to give us a ring, you might just, we might be able to squeeze you on. Oh, who, me? I don't want to give you a ring. I'm here. Why do I want to give you a ring? Well, I just thought you might like a chance. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, eight seven one triple two double eight double eight. Ring that number. Uh, Paul in Brighton. Hello, Paul. Hi, James. Yes, Paul. Yeah, I just want, it's a shame I wanted to speak to Ed, but I uh, know he's not there. Well, I, I kept him a little longer than he expected, but... Yeah, uh, he's interesting, isn't he? Well, um, do, you, uh, do you believe in all of this stuff? Yeah, I do, because I, I personally, I know Tim Riffitt, who that woman mentioned, mm. and I, want, I was going to ask him what he meant by cut and paste in... Well, I think what he... Well, I tell you what he means. He meant that, that uh, this man just took information from people like him and other people and didn't actually know anything about it himself. He I just think it's a load of rubbish. <laughs> you do? Yeah, I mean, Tim Riffitt's writ, he's got two books published. That, mm. Well, three books he's had published, but he's got two published by Vision in the, in the past two years. Yeah, but is he a remote viewer himself? Yeah, he is, yeah. But he's more yeah. of a scientist, so he's always experimenting yeah. things. But he, well, he can do remote viewing, yeah. He's, mm. he's got a book out in Vision paperback. Yeah. I think, you see, I think Ed use it, um, uses this uh, as a, I mean, he has this um, intelligence agency and he uses it for all sorts of things. Yeah, no, most of which, sure most of which you wouldn't talk about, of course. No, of course, it's all very uh, hush hush. And, uh, but a lot of people say, well, it's just, it's just bollocks, and you can't actually do it. I'm sure they would, because they've never, they've got no, no experience, or you know, perhaps it's just too, too much beyond, beyond what they can believe at that, at present time. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, um, if they did use it, the, the American army have ceased using it, they say, although we, you can never know whether it's true yeah, or not. They have to say that, don't they? I mean, do you think we have remote viewers in Britain? Yeah, we do, yeah. Uh, who are used by the authorities? Probably, yeah. Yeah? Because, uh, you know, my, my, my friend Tim Riffitt, he, he claims that a... Uh, He's a yeah. friend of yours, this well, guy. Well, yeah, I live, in the, I live near, near to where he lives. Um, yeah, I, can I be, I can be absolutely honest with you, Paul. I've never, ever heard of him. Can no, you, can he's not, he's not well known, but he yeah. is known, like, as that woman. But if, if he's written a couple of books about it, I should have heard of him. I mean, I must be one of the only programs in this country that talks about this sort of stuff. There are, there are, I can't think of any other radio or TV show that does as much about these unusual subjects than I do, and I'm surprised that, that he hasn't, or whoever looks after him, or, or no, helps him, or publishes him. Sort of uh, pub pub publicity yeah. and things. Well, he doesn't do it very well, Paul. If he no, doesn't, he, he, he's more. He's, he's got a friend in America called Jeff Rents. Have you heard of him? No. He's a talk radio host over there, no. and he's no, he's I haven't heard of him. Annoyed. Yeah. Um, his website is Rents. dot com, yeah. and yeah, he talks. He's talked on there a few times. Um, well, why, why, why wouldn't he ever come and talk to me? He might do. Yeah. yeah but <laughs> you know, you think you think if he had anything about him, he would uh, he would have come and uh, found out and called me. 
I don't think, I don't know, maybe his attitude's a bit different. I mean, he's got a website. Yeah, well, what do you mean his attitude's a bit different to what? I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm, I don't know him that well enough to really say... You what. just told me he was your friend. Well, it, friend's a very general term. You, can you mean you've met him once? Well, I... You mean you bought one of his books and went to a book signing and he signed it? I shall live in the same book of facts as him. You hang outside with binoculars. No, no, You're not actually. stalking this guy, are you? No, I've got better things to do. I okay. do know, I do know him actually. I do speak to him on, like now and again because we live Where? in the same book of flats. Like. Really? Yeah, he sells um, crystals and things. And oh right, yeah. No wonder Ed's <laughs> a bit dismissive. Well, mind you, if you bump into him again, tell him to listen to my program, and uh, well, that'll frighten him off. Actually, I would think he's probably yeah. Um, all right, Paul. Thank you. I've got his website if you want to. No, Paul, no, no, it's up to him. If he wants to get in touch with me and, uh, you know, get known by a bigger audience, there are so many talk shows in America on American radio. Most of them only have about 12 listeners, you know. Guy, Jeff Rents, he's got like 7 million web hits to his website a month. And well, you know, 7 million hits to a website means you've got one nerd sitting in a bedroom continually pressing off what's his. So it doesn't make wow. much difference at all. Thank you. I've done you it again. I've down, didn't you? done it again. Um, right, Marty Cox. Uh, so James, I got Sounds some like a condition. <laughs> I got some info from the Food Standards Agency about the chemical. It's called Sudan One. Uh, Sudan One. Do you remember we were talking about this before? Apparently, there's yes. a dangerous chemical in some Indian food. A spice well, or something. A spice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sudan One is a dye found in some hot chili products. This dye is not a permitted food colour in the European Union and is suspect is a suspected uh, genotoxic carcinogen, carci, carci, carcinogenic. That's exactly the one I was trying to spit out of my mouth. I um, hope I cleared it up for you. God save the whale. That's very nice. Royalty. I feel royalty about me as well, actually. Uh, Layla Pinder says, James, my husband Clive from Milton Keynes was just on the phone to you. I remember he started all this off. Regarding the illegal chemical found in food products, uh, he asked me to email you the details regarding it. Here's the address uh, of the government website where they have the info on it. It is www.food.gov.uk forward slash news forward slash news search archive forward slash Sudan. For regards, Layla. Thank you, Layla. What a long-winded website. What do they do that for? Fools. I've no idea. Hey, listen, it's been lovely. I've enjoyed my week in Yorkshire. Thank you very much indeed, you lovely Yorkshire people. Um, I don't think I'll be going to Liverpool in the near future, though, will I? No, I don't think you should. Oh, those, uh, they're very angry with you. Are they, really? Yes. All oh, right, I'll have to stay well away then, won't I? Yes, I would. I mean, there are nice parts of Liverpool. It's on the Wirral and places like that, aren't they? That's, that's yeah, and uh, Manchester, that's nice. And Manchester? Well, Manchester's not Liverpool. That'd be ridiculous. Oh, Manchester's a great place. I love Manchester, you know. Uh, back in the studio Monday, and uh, we will be, of course, talking to David Essex, apart from uh, other people. And who knows what other things we'll have lined up for you. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy the hot weather. It's going to be warm. I'm James Whale. John Kearns is next. Goose step in the garden, handstand in the hallway, flutter when the phone rings, surf on the slipstream of somebody new. Put some sizzle in your summer with the Talk Sports Singles Connection. Everybody loves the sunshine. Call 0871 220 0004 and tell us a bit about yourself. And we'll get to work compiling a list of potential local partners already looking for someone like you. Let's get down in the sunshine. 100% soul detection at the Talk Sports Singles Connection. 0871 220 0004 or join online at talksport.net. Listen carefully. How does this sound make you feel? If the sound of the post arriving each morning fills you with dread because of debt, you need to call W3 Debt Solutions. Call us today on 08000 326 333. If you have a regular income but serious debt, we could work with you to help you become debt-free within just five years, subject to acceptance. Over 90% of our customers end up paying less debt than they owed before they called us. Get debt off your mind. Call W3 Debt Solutions on free phone 08000 326 333. 100% soul detection at the Talk Sports Singles Connection. 0871 220 0004. Calls charged at national rates. On the hour news from...
from the UK's biggest commercial radio station, Talk Sport. From the Sky News Centre, this is Talk Sport News. The top stories from the Sky News Centre at one. There's a warning we could be facing a large-scale outbreak of measles. A new study blames a dip in childhood vaccinations. Mark Webber reports. Confidence in the combined MMR jab has plummeted because of fears about possible side effects and links to autism. That's led to the number of measles cases in England and Wales increasing in recent years, according to the research. Scientists warn that eventually the outbreaks won't just fizzle out as they tend to do at the moment. Drug safety watchdogs are warning the most commonly used form of HRT can double the risk of breast cancer. The alert follows research showing hormone replacement therapies caused 20,000 extra cancer cases over the last decade. Arnold Schwarzenegger has officially kicked off his political career. The Terminators picked up papers for the election for governor of California. It could be a celebrity-filled poll with porn mogul Larry Flint, X-rated actress Mary Carey and former TV child star Gary Coleman set to stand too. But Arnie reckons he's the best man for the job. In everything I ever did, I showed great leadership. There were times where people said it can never be done. That an Austrian farm boy can come over to America and get into the movie business. And you know what happened? I became the highest paid entertainer in the world. It's emerged EastEnders tough guy Steve McFadden is being terrorised by a gang of youths. The actor who plays Phil Mitchell in the hit soap has lodged an official complaint with police after the latest bout of harassment near his North London home. The final two British Navy ships return from the Gulf today. HMS Liverpool and HMS Marlborough dock in Portsmouth this morning. The crews will be reunited with their families after seven months at sea. It's last orders for the British beer belly. Brewers have come up with a new lager that can actually help drinkers get slimmer. Michelob Ultra reduces carbohydrate and calorie levels, but it still contains 5% alcohol. That's the latest from the Sky News Centre. I'm Martin Smedley. We're now on for a wee break. We are indeed. Everybody out, so there. Uh, Tony Cascadine on a long one. So here comes Big Biggie. I love it. I really love it. And a boy, Cascadine. No, Cascadine. They are the ones they left behind. Let's not count any chickens here. We got Tony Cascadine. Beecroft and Tony Cascarino on the Sports Breakfast. Today from 6 on Talk Sport. Talk Sport. Sports Update. The number seven shirt is still vacant at Chelsea when Sebastian Veron has picked 20 and Joe Cole 10. But with 30 squad members, Claudio Ranieri is now hinting the spending spree could be over. I ask Mr. Abramovich, 22 players, two for every place. If we want to try to fight for everything, it's important to have a very good champions in every position. Fulham are waiting to see if Middlesbrough come in with an official bid for Sean Davis. The midfielders handed in a transfer request. Everton's last bid was £3.5 million pounds a fortnight ago. Borough manager Steve McLaren admits Davis is someone who fits their player profile. He's English, he's young, he's got years ahead of him. And uh, someone who, who I said if he became available we would definitely be interested in. The Canadian Grand Prix has been taken off next season's Formula One calendar. Bernie Ecclestone sent a letter to race promoter Norman Legault confirming the Montreal race does not figure in his plans. Frenchman Raphael Jacqueline is three shots clear of the rest of the field going into round two of the Nordic Open. He shot a first round ten on a par 62. Philip Archer and Miguel Angel Jimenez are his nearest challenges on seven under par. Gloucestershire into the CNG final beating Derbyshire by one wicket. They reached their target of 200 and 20 with four overs to spare. Gloucestershire now meet either Lancashire or Worcestershire in the final at Lords. And Saracens have appointed former Australian fly half Rod Kafer as their new first team coach. Wayne Shelford was sacked after a poor season for Saris in the Zurich Premiership. We'll have more news and sport in an hour. I'm Ray Foden. 
hip hip hooray, it's Bill Young at drive time. Bill Young is on at drive time, hip 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 hooray. Bill Young is on at drive time and it's time to have your say. Just give him a phone call, he can text an email too. Bill Young is on at drive time and he wants to talk to you. Yes, you. Don't just walk the walk, talk the talk. Join Bill Young at drive time. And I mean really join me. Essential sport, breaking news, total talk. This afternoon from 4 on 1089 and 1053 AM. Talk sport. 1089 and 1053 AM, the UK's biggest commercial radio station. John Cairns on Talk Sport. 